Number 10, sexual intervention. In June 2019, a Sacramento County Sheriff's deputy was called to help with a teen's smoking and drinking habit, but instead of helping with the intervention, the deputy had sex with him instead. 45-year-old Shauna Bishop had a close relationship with her former boyfriend's ex-wife and their 16-year-old son. And even though the boyfriend thought her bond with the boy was a bit inappropriate, the mother didn't feel the same way and decided to keep Shauna around. When the mom found out her son had been drinking and doing drugs while at his dad's house, she decided to call Bishop for help. After all, the boy did have a strange affinity towards her. Besides, it's pretty normal to have another adult, especially if they're a cop, talk some sense into a young, impressionable kid. But Shauna decided it'd be a good idea to sleep with the teenager instead. So after their discussion, she spent about 10 minutes in the boy's room before heading back. It was only a couple of weeks after the incident that the boy told his sister. As soon as the news got out, the mother instantly called the police and reported Shauna. In court, her defense said that her judgment was clouded because she'd taken some sleeping pills that night. That being said, though, those claims didn't hold up, and after her arrest, the police found records of her stepmom and stepson related porn searches on her phone just one day after the incident. As a result, Shauna was registered as a sex offender and was sentenced to six months in custody with five years probation. Number 9. Free Hookups It's not uncommon to see cops helping criminals out in exchange for protection money, but this one Brewster police officer took things a step further when he facilitated a sex trafficking ring so he could get free sexual favors. Wayne Pfeiffer was in contact with a couple Queens-based traffickers that brought women and teenage girls to the city to work as prostitutes. His job was to warn them about potential law enforcement activity, you know, so they'd pack up and move to avoid arrests. And in return, he accepted free sex. As a matter of fact, sometimes he'd even engage in sexual activity while inside the police station. He even had text contacts with drivers who used to pick up and drop off girls for him. Apparently, Pfeiffer's role with the traffickers started way back in 2010 and went on for eight years until he was finally caught. The whole free sexual favors thing, on the other hand, had only been happening for a few months. Pfeiffer's conviction means he will not only lose his job, but he'll also get a considerable jail sentence. Oh, and he didn't deny any of the allegations either. In fact, his guilty plea came right after an episode of Law & Order came out that was based on his case. So guess he watched that and realized how crazy the operation was. Number 8. Serial Stalker In November 2021, a Palm Beach Gardens police officer was arrested for stalking and threatening his girlfriend. Ryan Brome, who had been an officer since 2003, met an old friend at a funeral after 20 years. That chance meeting turned out to be a life-changing event for both of them as they hit it off and started dating. Only five weeks into the relationship, though, Brian's girlfriend broke up with him thanks to his toxic behavior. Apparently, not only did he have anger issues, but he also had psychopathic tendencies. Plus, he was super controlling and used his position in law enforcement as leverage. So instead of keeping his head down and walking away from the relationship, he decided to send death threats to his ex-girlfriend. Because of her physical disabilities, the ex had to use a home monitoring system in case she fell. On top of that, she had a two-way speaker system with cameras throughout her apartment. And since he was a police officer and her boyfriend at the time, she gave him emergency access to these devices. But after their relationship turned sour, he started using it to stalk her and question her about who she was speaking with or the packages she received. Also, when she didn't return his text messages on time, he'd set her alarm system off. After getting fed up with the constant harassment, she removed his access, and even then, he still tried to break into her home. Things got really bad, however, when Brian kept calling her through burner phone numbers after she blocked him. Eventually, she decided to brave his threats and report him to the police, which led to his arrest. He was then charged with aggravated stalking and cyber-stalking. Also, this wasn't the first time he'd shown his toxic behavior in the relationship, which was surprising, considering he was still a free man. Number 7. Police Gangsters you may have heard of police officers working with gangsters to have fake encounters, you know, to fast track their way to the top. But what you probably haven't heard of is a group of police gangsters that run a criminal gang themselves. Yup, we're talking about seven cops that were arrested in Baltimore for running a multi-state drug ring in Virginia and North Carolina. The officers called it Operation Rockfish, which, to be fair, is a badass name. In reality, though, it was just them stealing hardcore drugs like heroin and selling them. Apparently, they've been running the gang for almost a year and a half and had stolen over $250,000 in cash from their victims. Oh, but that's not all, because they'd actually make bogus stops and false searches to trap people. Also, to cover up the activity, they'd file fraudulent police reports with help from other police departments. On top of this, they were charging for overtime pay and took more than five 
$500,000 from their departments. The worst part about the operation, though, was the fact that many of their victims included people who were innocent, so these fake drug busts would lead to the arrest of people who, out of fear, would refuse to testify against the crooked cops. And just in case you were wondering, they turned off their body cameras. That being said, at some point, this large-scale operation was bound to be uncovered. And since the department was already under investigation thanks to a suspicious death that happened under police custody, it didn't take long for the bigger plot to be unveiled. Thankfully, all seven officers involved have been charged with racketeering, with previous cases being reopened to rectify false charges against their victims. Who else abuses their power and deserves a video like this? Tell us in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 6. Domestic Abuse In August 2022, Miami police received calls for a disturbance. Upon arrival, they realized one of their own officers was involved in domestic abuse. 34-year-old Valerio Zamir Vargas was a five-year veteran who'd been with the Miami police force for just a couple of years, and at the time of the incident, he was living with his girlfriend and 10-year-old son. Now, Valerio wasn't exactly known for his abusive attitude, but on a fateful Tuesday morning, Vargas seemed like a man who'd lost his mind. First, he woke up his girlfriend and demanded she unlock her phone. Before she could do so, though, he pushed her to the ground and tried to overpower her. And when her son tried to intervene and help his mom, he was also shoved away. Having said that, things got really serious when he started to move towards a safe that had the two guns inside. So before he could reach it, they both tackled him to save their lives. And in response, Varga put his girlfriend in a chokehold and tried to basically kill her. Thankfully, though, she somehow managed to get away with some help from her son and ran to a neighbor's house where they called 911. The Miami officer was then arrested and charged with domestic battery by strangulation. He was also relieved of duty. Number 5. Towing Cash in May 2021, the FBI uncovered a corruption scheme orchestrated by three NYPD cops involving everything from tow trucks to straight-up drug trafficking. The trio of cops worked in the 10th Precinct in Queens, with one of them having retired in March of 2020. Apparently, they'd been running the scheme for nearly five years before they were arrested at their Long Island homes. Now, their crimes weren't simple or traceable like the group we talked about earlier. Instead, these guys had an almost foolproof plan. For example, for one of their accident investigation gigs, they take thousands of dollars in bribes from towing firms to hand them the crash jobs. Of course, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but in reality, the NYPD is supposed to use a program to authorize tow operators and distribute orders fairly, which these guys didn't do. While the towing jobs were an easy way to make a quick buck, the real money came from their fake jobs as security for multiple drug distribution networks. They just show up with a gun, point it at the drug dealers, and run off with the heroin and other substances themselves. The surprising thing, though, is that a lot of times they just forget to switch off their body cams, which resulted in incriminating evidence. What isn't shocking, though, is the fact that they were also incredibly racist, to the point that they were recording expressing affinity for the notorious KKK and throwing out slurs willy-nilly. But they were eventually arrested by the FBI on corruption charges, with a retired officer facing life in prison for drug charges and the other two facing at least five years on bribery charges. Thankfully, justice will be served. Number 4. War on Drugs It's always nice to see the son of a law enforcement officer following in his father's footsteps to deal with drug problems. But this Jackson County cop got a bit too proactive in his arrests when he started planning the evidence himself. 28-year-old Zachary Wester began his law enforcement career with the Liberty County Sheriff's Office in 2015. But nine months into his career, he was kicked out thanks to allegations of sexual misconduct. This should have been enough to ring alarm bells for the rest of the police force, but oddly enough, he landed another gig as a patrol deputy at the Jackson County Sheriff's Office just a few months later. His job was to make traffic stops and snoop around for drugs, and honestly, it looked like he was really good at it since he managed to make a record number of arrests only in a couple of years. By 2018, word spread in the courthouse circles that his cases were questionable due to his submitted evidence not being up to the mark. Plus, his reasons for stopping vehicles and searching them were also very suspicious. So, after a lengthy investigation, it was discovered that he'd been planning drugs on innocent motorists that had gotten 20 people arrested for no reason at all. In fact, video evidence of him putting packets of cocaine in his victims' pockets was also found, and his impounded car had drugs in it that he had apparently nabbed from one of his actual busts. As a result, Wester now faces 10 years in state prison on many different charges. Number 3. Hush Money In May 2022, federal authorities revealed a crooked corruption scheme involving five Patterson cops and their sergeant. 
The FBI investigation, which started back in 2016, highlighted eight police officers in the Patterson Police Department. Apparently, they had a habit of beating their victims into submission. As a matter of fact, one of the cops even admitted to abusing a suicide patient in their hospital emergency room. Oh, and selling drugs was a super normal thing for them since they all colluded and took turns on who'd do the dirty work on a given day. Unlike other corrupt cops, they had an ingenious plan to shove everything under the rug without raising suspicion. They got their sergeant involved and paid him hush money to keep their assault and drug dealings under wraps. Interestingly enough, while all five of them were arrested in 2020 and handed out different sentences, the sergeant, Michael Cheff, has yet to be handed any punishment. He probably won't get a severe sentence because, well, he wasn't directly involved in the crimes. But he did know that they were happening. Number 2 Blazed Out of His Mind In August 2022, a Miami police officer was arrested because he'd been driving under the influence of cocaine. 32-year-old Jeffrey Jose Marcano had been on the force for eight years and had a clean record for the most part. But things started to shift when his colleagues noticed something off about him, as if he'd been doing drugs. So they decided to launch a probe on him and follow him around to catch any illegal activity. And that's exactly what they found when he drove a police vehicle to a Colombian restaurant. While there, he was seen downing multiple drinks with a group of men. Plus, he was staggering and swaying while walking back to his car. Before he could drive off and cause any damage, detectives approached him and asked him to step out. In a split second of some stupid decision-making, he thought he could just get away by dropping two small bags of cocaine out of his pocket. You know, so they wouldn't actually find it on him. But of course, he was way too clumsy and it was noticed, resulting in his arrest on the spot. He was then suspended from the job and charged with drug possession. Number 1. Undercover Agent in April 2019, an undercover FBI agent baited seven Orangeburg County officers by pretending to be a Mexican cartel member. The agent, who went by the codename Jamie, asked the officers if they'd like to make some quick cash. Apparently, he told them he worked for the cartel and all they had to do was make sure his trucks remained unchecked and guarded. He specifically made it a point to tell them the vehicles were full of cash and drugs. He wasn't surprised, though, when they accepted the offer open-heartedly because they'd been involved in other shady activities like selling counterfeit paperwork for special visas. The officers were really on board since they even took photos and sent them to the undercover agents to show them the trucks weren't being messed with. Now all that was left was arresting them. The FBI agent told them the cartel liked their work and wanted to invite them to Miami, where they'd be taken for a nice fishing trip in a big boat. You know, to lure them somewhere they wouldn't have weapons. He even arranged all the tickets for them too. So early Friday morning, they got to the airport thinking they were about to go partying with some big cartel honchos, but instead, FBI agents swoop down on them at the ticket counter. They are now facing conspiracy charges. Thanks for watching. What would you do if a crooked cop threatened you? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time on the Bad Badger.